good morning. Today is the 28th of August and this is uh, part nine of a slightly shambolic shuffle around the 2023 Nebworth Classic Car Show. I do apologize in advance for the wind noise um, if I get interrupted by music in the background, which has happened all the time, and I've already had copyright notifications from this weekend. Nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. And also, we don't talk about deals on this channel, views. Thanks to the Mayor of London and the Oxford Limited Zone expansion, that's happening tomorrow at the time of recording. So, um, there we go. We've got an MGA there, sort of from the 50s. Very early um, Rolls Royce. Silver Shadow, 1967-68 registration. Very clean looking engine and also ooh, very, very nice beige leather interior. In fact, the Rolls Royce of beige leather interiors. Most agreeable. We've got a very, very rare Peugeot 205 GTI here. Um, the body kit on this is by a company called Dimmer Design, who are based up in Cheshire. This was uh, registered in 87. The uh, engine in this has been changed from the original one. We've actually got the pre-1988 dashboard in here as well. Um, it's been changed from uh, the original one to a two liter engine out of a Peugeot uh, 306 GTI 6, but it's also been supercharged. So this is quite a piece of machinery. <laughs> wow. And then um, got a Porsche 944 here. That Peugeot is probably quicker, to be honest. It's got 400 horsepower. Um, this is just the S2, about 1989. Couple of Corvettes here. This one, from what I remember, is the previous generation, the C7, I think they call these, with a seven-speed manual gearbox. Yes, a seven-speed manual gearbox. One of the only cars in the world to have a seven-speed. I think the other one's a 911. A um, bit of an earlier one here. I think this is a C5, this one, from memory. That's what a C6 this one is. That's the C7 on the left. It's 2008, the LS3. Another MGB GT with rubber bumpers, 77, 78. And then we've got Boxster here. Uh, I think it's the original generation of Boxster, actually. Yeah, just a Boxster with the uh, orange indicator, so it must be quite an early one. MGB 1968, 69. Then a GMC Sierra Classic. Um, massive, so 77, 78 that one. Then the 7, 67, 68 MGC. Yes, a C rather than a B. There's two ways you can tell. One is this massive bonnet bulge. And the second thing, it says C on the back, which uh, is quite handy, really. 1980 to 1981, Austin Allegro, a Series 3. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the time um, for yes, the please. Daily Driver. We do so, uh, if like Allegros like on this channel, they are fun. If you have a story Hopefully we've got another Allegro coming up on the channel very soon for review. Basis. We've already had done one. Okay, to be 1985, uh, so 86, um, now Rover 3500 nice. um, Vitesse, daily SD1, driver slot. quite a late one. Event. Very nice kind of um, yes. upgraded steering wheel there, which uh, was, was most gratifying to see. Mmm, very tasty. And of course, an MG X Power SV from 2004. They only made, I think it was something like 80 of these, about 80. Um, I had a walk around on the SVR Auto model, which is very rare. This, I think, is just a standard SV, although it's still got some stupid amount of power. Uh, I don't know what this Sayas doing here. Uh, Lotus Elise S 2012, and then a Caterham 2007, trying to fall over here, viewers. Ooh, a Mark IV Toyota Supra, 1993 to 1994. That is most agreeable, viewers. Very nice. It's pretty, pretty standard, well, apart from the wheels. 
over to the UK car, we'll just buy the plates and things. Vauxhall VX220, based on um, the same chassis as that, at least over there. It's actually got sort of biscuit leather seats in it. The VX220 didn't have Lotus engines though, it had its uh, Vauxhall's engines. Um, another MGB GT, 69 to 70 registration, obviously stick it up for some competition type of fun. This um, MGB here from 7071 looks like it's had some sort of work to bring it up to a sort of different standard. It's even got the sort of Garmin sat nav in there and uh, different interior door handles, things like that. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? The Jensen Interceptor. This is one of the very last ones. They went bankrupt, I think, around 76. And then um, uh, the uh, administrators actually actually um, made a few more of them to use the parts. Very late one. Modified uh, 1983-84 Mini here with these super light alloy wheels. Yes, it started life as a as a Mini City E, which is an absolute base model in a range. Um, call 07867, seven, sorry, 07867 £5,000 for a, you know, a Mini of an MOT is actually not a bad price, really. Very much to do with personal taste, though. Well, we've got some more classics over here, including a Fiat 126 bit, which is a water-cooled 126. Um, Isle of Man, Roto Simulator there, MGTD, there's the X-PAG engine, you can see what's called the X-PAG engine quite clearly there. The uh, 1250s, 1951, is that a Singer 9 viewers? Looks like it is. Oh, an Escort XR3i. So the uh, Fiat 126 is on the way out, what time is it? Um, it's... <laughs> Well, like two hours since the show started. Oh well, never mind. Garfield's here. Sanyo mobile phone. The phone's a bit newer than the car, actually. Uh, Garfield, though, isn't it? We've got more Garfield at the back of here as well. It's a really nice example, actually. It's an 8788. A couple of um, Austin 7. I think these are Austin 7 Ulsters, these two. One um, silver. Be from a sort of late 20s, early 30s. Ooh, another one of these Pontiac Firebirds. This one is an 87, yeah, it's a Firebird Trans Am, like Knight Rider. A Mini Scamp. That is, uh, yeah, a mini-based kind of, uh, sort of kit car, really. I don't know what else to say, really. It looks very kind of homemade, doesn't it, that one? And we've got uh, Mini Clubman Estate that's been modified, 1978-79. Uh, Actually, we've got some sort of wood on the interior, which is unusual. So we've got um, chap there's just having a, a rest. you re resting for some time. Etched on my memory. Right, let's uh, go to the part of the show now, Vius. Very rare. 2000 story, Nissan 200SX. <laughs> this is one of the very last sold in this country. They finished production for our market. I think this is the S14 shape. I could be wrong. Finished production in uh, 99, but some were sold into 2000 on this one. All of the late ones actually um, have a touring pack on them, like this one. That is um, amazing. And we've got a, a GMC Astro van, 1995, 1996. And then we've got this uh, Mark II Jack, have a look at the information sheet. That's a 3.8, 1964. XMOD. As we've uh, said in previous parts, although this is a 64, we've not got a B registration because some local authorities, like here in um, Hertfordshire, decided they didn't want to use those plates, but all local authorities were actually made to use the suffix plate by 1965. So it should be something like, I don't know, VNK 233B, but it's not. Mark III Ford Capri with a Cosworth engine, 1986-87. Obviously not a standard thing, but putting a Cosworth engine in these is quite easy because it's a variation on the Pinto that um, the Capri's also used. 
1990 to 1991 Unos Roadster in that lovely colour combination of a sort of a beige type interior, although we've still got leather seats, which would be nice, and um, the green paintwork. It's even got like a Lotus style Unos badge, which is a bit, um, well, I don't know. Um, Peugeot 106 GTI, these were very well regarded back in the day, actually. You don't see very many of these. A lot of them were kind of um, sort of modified and then thrashed, which um, is a bit of a shame. This 1966 Ford Cortina, Lotus Cortina actually, um, so he's face lifted once, it says Cortina in front of there, different grill and the airflow ventilation which came in I think October 64, but if that's a genuine Lotus one it would be very rare and expensive. Another example here of a car that was imported um, before 1981 or something like that, but it's a lot older than that, before 1981 when a car came into this country, they just slapped whatever plate that, that, that year was. It didn't really make a difference what, what year a car actually was. So this is actually a 73, although it's got a 79 plate on it. So a Mustang Mach 1. I think it's similar to the one that's used in the television series Saxondale, from memory. Uh, the Saab, I think it's got... Yeah, we're going to have to skip that one, I'm afraid. Um, Mark II Ford Zephyr Zodiac which um, looks very nice. It's a 59, I think, or something like that, judging by that replica tax disc. Another MGC, um, two MGCs here. And uh, 1967-68, this one on an F, like the other one. I don't think I've seen so many MGCs at one particular show before. This is um, something. It sort of reminds me of... Um, See if I have audio that are used in Doctor Who, but you know, this is, I don't know, I don't know what it's based on at all. Presumably built some point in the 70s. And there's that other MGC. I, think I prefer this colour, it's like Epic's Old English White, uh, this particular one. So, MG, I think this is like a YA or YB, this one. That would be kind of about 1950, something like that. What I'm enjoying is that both this and the Triumph TR2 are not in concourse condition, they're just in sort of a used condition, which I, I like to see at shows. I don't like to see everything that's immaculate. Let's go to a showroom if you want to see that. So Triumph's are not a TR2, but I do apologize. TR3 this one is, which is a bit later, so this would be from the late 50s. Obviously you've got quite a few people here who uh, like Triumphs, there's Roll Rhythm here. This one is a Vitesse, late Vitesse, a Mark II Vitesse, 69 to 70. And next to it is a Peril 1360 convertible. This is a 1970, so it's one of the, the uh, very last ones. They actually finished in 71. I have driven a Herald 1360 convertible. I drove that uh, last October, actually. Uh, the brakes are not the best, because we don't have a servo, and the gearbox is a bit tricky because it has no Segre first, so just watch that when you drive one of these. Another one of these for Tess's uh, 7071 registration. And then we've got ooh, a Skoda Estelle. Excellent, Estelle 120 on Instagram. So 19, gosh, it's 80, 85, and that looks like the original plate on it as well. It's got the uh, Skoda HV engine, which lasted from 1964 to 2004 in various capacities. The last car I think to use it was the Fabia. Uh, Rover 110, um, so between 62 and 64. One of the last types of P4 to be made, second one to be seen today. Peugeot 205, I think it's a CTI rather than a GTI. So it looks like it. Um, personal plate, it's actually it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a CTI with an automatic gearbox. It must be a very rare spec. Certainly a lot rarer than the normal GTIs. So uh, a, a Triumph Spitfire Mark III. 1968 to 1969 registration. Another Herald 1360 convertible, 1967-68. Just seeing how there wheels on this one. 
Someone's put a different gearbox in this to make it easy to drive. Now that's probably a good idea, to be honest. Ooh, Aston Martin DB6 1967. Two Aston Martin DB6s. I think the name of this colour is Silver Birch, from memory. Um, you don't normally see two of them together unless you're like some high-end dealer. Uh, 67, this is in 1969 to 70. Um, but they're both, I think, the same colour. For some reason, this car doesn't say Superleggera on the bonnet like the other one does. Stag action here. Do you prefer this DB6 or do you prefer a Stag? That one's an auto, actually, that one. So, yeah, more Stag action. Is this an auto as well? Oh, it is an auto. And someone's put a different gear lever on it. I can't remember the name of this sort of colour. Like, it looks quite nice actually on the uh, Dolomites, this colour. Uh, is this a Mark 1 or a Mark 2? Uh, let's have a check. Yeah, it's a Mark 2, this one. Oh, a Nissan Micra K10. Uh, this is the first facelift one. 87, 88 on an E. It's not that basic. We've actually got a passenger mirror for a start. Some didn't even come with passenger mirrors. So it's a 1.2 auto, I think. You have GSX. GSX was quite fancy, actually, compared with some of the other trims. 1992, 1993, BMW E3320i convertible. Surprised we haven't seen more of these here today. They're just cropping up everywhere at the moment in shows. Um, Bel Air 1957, four door rather than a two door. The two doors are more iconic, but maybe this is more affordable. Uh, so cool. 07541 520 or 01277354254. Looks very nice. I mean, uh, it's not the sort of thing I would personally, but it's quite nice. And we've got another Thunderbird. Unless this one's moved from where it was before. The number of American cars at this show is, is really quite surprising, actually. There's absolutely tons of them here. Uh, well, this one's for sale as well. 07976441298. car, that's interesting. Because... Uh, when the uh, E-Type came out, the whole thing was it could do 150, and only the sort of, I think, um, ones that had been hotted up by Jackie with cars really could. This one's got a beige leather interior, that's very nice. Maybe that was from America originally or something. No, he's a nice man. Nissan 370Z, it's a 2014, we see that yesterday, I think. Next to it, Austin Healy 3000. If we look at the front, it might tell us what mark this is. That's a Mark 1 then. Another Ford Zephyr Mark 2. Gosh, there's so many of these here today. Absolutely, utterly loads of them. This one, I don't know, late 50, something like that. Interesting looking Mark 1 Cortina that's been very heavily modified to the extent of actually putting um, these are like Mark 1 Granada or, uh, or Ford Capri door handles on it. And someone's put a beige leather interior in it, which of course I approve of very much. Very heavy window tinting, got a V8 in it. Yeah, it's a bit different from when it rolled out off the production line in 1966. And we got this Ford Jeep, we saw that yesterday, it's a 42. And Hector the Tractor. Hello, Hector. 1964 Ford Galaxy 500, uh, colour is Guardsman Blue. Um, yeah, he's come to the show. Hello. And we've got the uh, Corvette here. 76 Stingray. I like the way people put information in the number plate for me, it makes my life easier. So I don't look as ignorant as I actually am. Dave Smith has had this for 23 years. Another Mark 1 Lotus Cortina, 1966. 
I wonder if this is a genuine one or not. If it's a genuine one, it'd be worth an absolute utter fortune. That minivan is on the way out. That's in the 70s, though. No, sorry, it's 1981. Gosh, it's a really late one. The latest one I've seen is on an age plate. 2002 Suzuki Carry, I think, rather than Super Carry at this stage. Um, when was the last time you saw one of these? They're not loads around. That is um, <laughs> full of filler, I'm afraid. 1988 to 89 Ford Sierra Sapphire RS Cosworth. These wheels were off something else, but I can't quite place them actually at the moment. Um, not the first Cosworth we see today, it's certainly not the last we'll be seeing. First generation Subaru Impreza. This one, I'm trying to work out if it's just had SCI badges put on it or whether this is a genuine UK car. It's one of the later ones of the first generation of Impreza. The UK ones were generally called Turbo 2000, so I think this one um, was like a special edition or imported or something. We've got 99. Pre facelift Mark 1 Ford Capri. 7172. This is the 3000 GT model with an automatic gearbox. I didn't realise the GTs could be had automatic. I thought it was the uh, 3000 E's, but there we go. You can have whatever you like, really, can't you? The uh, Essex engine. This looks suspiciously like a Jaguar 420 viewers. That's very nice. It's 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 basically a face of S type. Uh, seven, 67 this will be, or 68 possibly, with a green leather interior. Very nice. Another Mark 1 Escort here, RS2000. 1974 75 registration, so quite a late one. Another Chevy Camaro, 70 to 71 registration. Another one of these uh, Mustangs, 1995-1996 on an N. Seems that the rear track is so far sort of in board of um, <laughs> wheel arches on this one. Much older Mustang here, 1965. I think we saw this uh, yesterday, viewers. And we would have seen um, this, this green one yesterday as well. Which again is like that blue one, um, 96 that one, I'll just skip that, Dodge I'm afraid for years, don't talk about deals on this channel, W30 Toyota MR2, I drove one of these actually on the channel last year, it was quite a lot of fun, although the camera shake was considerable, 1971-72 Ford Escort, Venara steering wheel and some modifications, And then, uh, so we saw this yesterday, this um, Renault 5 GT Turbo, 1987. There was a speed on their wheels. Ford Corsair. Is this the same we, we saw yesterday, or was a different one? I have a feeling that this is a different one. It'd be a V4 by the time it was registered in 1967 or 68. Yes, you're right. It was rather right to the uh, sort of deluxe model. Could have been registered uh, by Ford or maybe just registered in Essex. We are close to Essex, of course, here. Ooh, another MGR V8. Very, very nice views. Dark green with beige leather interior and wood. I do quite like those views. Um, a most agreeable car, and unfortunately, it appears to be for sale, which is a bit of a crazy. What actually '94? Call John on 077 It's only ninety-nine thousand pounds. Porsche 911, probably from the 80s at some point. And then another Daimler, I think two half litre V8 Bs were called. Um, the V8 250s were, were the later ones. This looks like it's an earlier one. Ooh, and that has a 
very nice beige leather interior with wood and red piping. Nice degradable views. Oh, sorry, it is a V250. Uh, 67 on an E. Up to 911 is a Carrera. Gosh, I used to have one of these. Years. This is a Mazda 33F 1997-1998 registration. This is the uh, GXI, uh, probably a 1.5 or a 1.8. They handle amazingly well these. One of the, the early cars I owned was one of these. I owned it from 2002 to 2005. And yeah, they look like nothing else, they handle like nothing else. They are really good. Although the reversibility is terrible. 1973 to 74, MG Midget Mark III, I think this is. I have driven one of these. It was a much earlier one, it was 68, the one I drove. And they are a bit of a handful because uh, certainly on the 68, you don't get a, a Sigma Mesh first gear and you don't get servo assisted brakes. You do, though, in this stainless sovereign from 68 to 69. Again, it's like a Jaguar 420 we saw earlier, a sort of facelifted uh, S type, but the Daimler version. Even more luxury. 65 Ford Mustang Fastback. Oh, it's for sale. Uh, call um, 07986 815 243. And then another one of these. Um, Another one of these Mustangs is the previous generation, it's a Roush Mustang. Jaguar XK150, uh, fixed head coupe with the large kind of uh, Wabasto type sunroof. It's also Tudor Wabasto, I was right. What year is it? It's a 59. So that's quite a uh, rest spec. Oh, an Alvis. Uh, this will be, I think, a TE21 by Graber of Switzerland. Uh, 64, yeah, TE21 drop head coupe. They were very expensive cars. They didn't make an awful lot of them, and by 67, they'd stopped production of all cars at Alvis to concentrate on, I think, some military vehicles, actually. So then uh, we have this uh, Fiat Mark, Fiat Punto Mark II once again. Um, Offer to Active Sport with the fire engine. Uh, yeah, classic vehicle day certificate, I suppose, because it's a 2003, um, is a classic now. And we've got this uh, Lancia Beta. Spider from 1980, saw this yesterday. What about the Ford Cortina? Quite a lot of um, sort of changes, but I still think that's pretty good. Saw this yesterday as well, 1967 Ford um, Zodiac Executive Auto, the absolute pinnacle of the uh, Zephyr Zodiac range for the Mark IVs. Not very good in an accident, unfortunately, but um, nice and Big, I suppose. <laughs> earlier kind of early uh, minor base pickup. GTM Rossa we saw yesterday as well. Still don't know what year this is. But yeah, look, even more Metro bits. I love the way they just st stuck a Metro steering one and GTM logo on it. Fantastic. This looks like a uh, popular or an Anglia or something, although it's been incredibly heavily modified. Oh, it is a popular. It used to love modifying those back in the day. Ooh, 1989 to 1990, MG Metro 1300. They are superb cars, these. They're very, very nice to drive. Uh, so it's a, it's a 90, this one. Oh, it's got... Um, you know, different wheels on it from the picture. Mark three Ford Capri. Not as many Capris here as there were yesterday, that's for sure of years. Um, 82 1.6 GL, one owner from view. Wow. Goodness me. Part one MX5 NA with the, the airbag, actually. 
Don't know what year that is. Personal plate. This one, modified Unos, same sort of era. Oh, an Opal GT. Someone's dropped a different engine in there. This would have uh, originally had either 1.1, which is quite rare, or 1.9, it was a lot more common. Now it's got a red top in it. Uh, gearbox Manta 1.8 Getrog. Never imported over here, only sold in countries uh, like the United States of America and elsewhere in Europe. BMW 635CSI. Very nice views. Oh, it's got a beige leather interior as well. Very, very agreeable. I, I do like that view. So I'm very happy with that indeed. And we'll finish with this uh, 997 911. I'm not exactly sure what year that is, so. It's a Carrera S. Anyway, uh, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let us know leave a comment below and uh, we shall um, see you again soon for more incorrect information.